So the thumbnail is a bit sensational. <laughs> But I've always wanted to make one of these YouTuber classic reacting to hate comments videos, and now I have a really legitimate reason to. So recently, I posted a reel to Instagram talking about gender bias, i.e. sexism in photography. It was a one minute video, so I couldn't really dig very deep, but I gave some statistics and some quips, and I will play it for you after this intro. At first, the comments were all from folks in my audience, saying things to the effect of, thank you for speaking about this. But pretty quickly, the algorithm picked it up, and it was found by photographers outside my audience. And that's when the comment section started to turn. So I knew intellectually that sexism exists in the photography industry. I catch snippets of it in circumstances where I'm around a lot of other photographers. And of course, it impacts me in my profession. I can feel it around me. But I've never had to face it written down like this in a way that is directed at me specifically. <laughs> I always kind of assumed that these sexist attitudes were more in the realm of unconscious bias, but then reading this comment section kind of broke that illusion for me. These attitudes, for many photographers, aren't unconscious at all. They fully believe that women just aren't as talented, as hardworking, as business savvy, as good at marketing, as determined as men. And they see nothing wrong with typing that out from their professional accounts and leaving it in the comment section for everyone to see and agree with. So many of the arguments here boil down to, it's not sexist, women just aren't as good as men. Okay, so, headline. <laughs> Woman makes post about sexism, is shocked when comments are sexist. I hear you. Yvonne, what did you expect? Does that mean that I shouldn't talk about it, though? Because a lot of the comments on this reel were also telling me not to talk about it. Don't talk about sexism because it's not real. It's kind of the same as, don't talk about sexism because everyone already knows it's real. I am gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it because it's affecting me. And I don't care if it's surprising or unsurprising or unbelievable or uncomfortable or unnecessary. It's affecting me and it's affecting all women in this industry. And I want people to understand how and why and what that looks like. It would be really easy to dismiss these commenters as randoms on the internet because the internet is sexist, but the real world, not so much apparently. But my curiosity got the better of me and I investigated who these people were who were leaving these comments. I clicked through and looked at their profiles, only to discover they're all working photographers. Most of the comments you're seeing are from people with decent portfolios, maybe decent follower accounts, commenting from their professional accounts. <laughs> these people are my peers, they're my contemporaries, they're the guys I bump into in the photographer pit, the guys who populate photo walks and meetups, maybe the guys that I learn from, take advice from, maybe I like their reels or their podcasts. These guys are all around me, and oh my god, it is disturbing to know that they make these assumptions about me just based on my gender. <laughs> It's not surprising, but oh my God, is it upsetting. So today I will read some hate comments. I'll describe some common themes, address some assumptions, and hopefully shed a little light on the state of misogyny in the photography community. I really want to urge you not to dismiss this as a handful of strangers on the internet. And I'm sure that the women watching are not tempted to do so because we feel these attitudes around us, right? In a way that is really, really hard to describe for someone who has not experienced it themselves. I just need you to trust me on this one. <laughs> I want you to sit back and listen and have some faith that my assessment of the situation is just as rational and level-headed as your own. Have some faith that it is not my assumptions, but my experiences that are coloring my perspective here. So intro over, here's the video I'm talking about and in it, I rehash a lot of the statistics that I discussed in my original video about sexism and photography, which is here, and I will remake it at some point, I promise. But in the meantime, here's the real. Let's talk gender bias in photography. Women make up less than 25% of all professional photographers who are making a full-time income, despite the fact that around 80% of students graduating from photography programs are women. Female photographers earn, on average, 40% less than their male counterparts. That's almost four times the average gender wage gap in Canada. So this problem is particularly bad in photography. And it's unsurprising when you look at the stats. 92% of commercial advertisements are photographed by men, despite the fact that women make 80% of all consumer purchases. You would think that if you're selling to mostly women, having the female gaze in your advertisements might be useful, but apparently it doesn't matter. Camera companies don't care about the female gaze either because around 85% or more of brand ambassadors that they select are men. 
I wonder if, on some level, we expect men to be better at photography than women because literally every list of famous and influential photographers I could find online is populated by men and Annie Leibovitz. Now, I am tempted <laughs> to comb through and address every single idiotic comment with the thorough roasting that it deserves, and I'll save some breath at the end of this video to do a bit of that, but I think it's more productive to address some of the broader trends that underlie many of the beliefs being expressed here. So the misogynist comments boil down to two often overlapping pots, a Venn diagram, if you will. These pots are as follows. The first, it's not sexism, women are just misrepresenting their experiences. And the second, it's not sexism, women just aren't as good as men. The first one ignores the statistics, and the second one rationalizes them. We see really similar thinking in the conversations around racism. And indeed, the intersectionality between sexism and racism hits hard in photography. Like, really hard. Look at all of these famous and recognized photographers and you'll see that they all have something in common. Here's a challenge. Go and find me a list that features top 10 most famous and influential photographers or something like that, that has a person of color on it. I'll wait. A lot of people who have never experienced racism will hear all of these folks give testimonies about how they've been discriminated against, about racial profiling and police brutality and hate crimes, and will ask them, what makes you think it was because of your race? How do you know it was racism and not something else? Maybe the person who discriminated against you was having a bad day. Somebody said something mean to me last week, but I didn't assume it was because I was white. You can't always jump to see the worst in people. Basically, this is saying, I don't trust this entire group of people to accurately interpret and report their experiences. And why might you not trust an entire group of people's judgment? Why might you have negative beliefs about an entire group of people? Huh. So, sexism and racism are experienced differently by different groups of people, often simultaneously. And obviously, I have experience with one and not with the other. But the arguments made against the ubiquitous nature of racism bear remarkable similarities to the arguments made against the ubiquitous nature of sexism. And these arguments are often being made by the same group of people, i.e. people who have never experienced either. From my perspective, it all comes down to putting trust in other people. Hear me out. You have had one set of experiences as you move through the world and interact with it, and those experiences shape your perspective. When someone tells you something that does not line up with your experiences, you may say, well, I have a different perspective. But when that someone is telling you something that lies outside the scope of your perspective, it requires trust. You have to trust that they are just as rational as you are and just as capable of interpreting their own experiences. That their perspective is really informed by their experiences, just as yours is. When you try to rationalize someone else's perspective on discrimination using only your own experiences, you're going to wind up explaining discrimination in a way that is in itself discriminatory. Editing Yvonne here. I realized that I didn't do a fabulous job of tying this tangent back to the comments I'm showing in the video. I thought that it was self-evident, but watching it back, I want to be a little bit more clear on the point here. Anyone posting an argument based on anecdotal evidence, like, well, all the photographers at the studio I work at are women, or these comments here, these folks are disagreeing with or disregarding the stats because it doesn't align with their own personal experience. Now, there are legitimate reasons to disagree with any set of stats. Maybe it's got a poor sample size or shoddy data collection methods, but you'll notice that's not the argument that any of these guys are making. What I read in these comments is, the stats are unreliable because they conflict with my own experience or observations of reality. Since the stats are the product of thousands of women reporting their own experiences, these comments are essentially saying, my set of experiences as a singular man are more reliable than the collective experiences of hundreds or thousands of women. So when we unmask the villain here, it's just a roundabout way of dressing up misogyny. And that brings me to my second pot of comments here. It's not sexism, women just aren't as good as men. <laughs> so this is funny, right? Because it is so self-defeating. These guys are so unwilling to acknowledge that gender-based discrimination is real, that they are willing to make blanket statements about all women to explain the statistics. I shouldn't have to say it, but I am gonna say it. Making blanket statements about all women is sexism. <laughs> like, come on. And here it is, right? Women just don't want to run businesses. 
women just don't know how to market themselves. Women just want to be in front of the camera, not behind it. Women just don't put in as much work, on average. <laughs> so you have all of these beliefs about me, just by looking at me, just based on my gender, that I don't know how to run a business, I can't market myself, I'm not very hardworking. You have these beliefs, and obviously other people do too, and you don't think that impacts my career. <laughs> if my potential clients have these assumptions about me, you don't think that impacts how much they're willing to pay for my services? <laughs> The ideology behind all of these comments is the assumption that everyone is starting at zero, right? Equality of opportunity does not produce equality of outcome. So when men outperform women by a mile in the commercial market, it's because women just aren't as good at photography. So the only solution to this that these guys can fathom is forcing clients and employers to hire subpar photographers for the sake of gender equality, because after all, women are subpar. Here's a few. It's essential to recognize the capabilities of women and avoid using gender as an excuse for disparities. If two candidates present their portfolio and one is better, reason for going with thus candidate isn't sexism, racism, or any ism. Based on their work, they were chosen. Can you imagine living in a world like that where all decision making is just entirely fair and rational? <laughs> oh, to live in this man's delusions. Finally, the eye of the artist has no gender. Well, fuck right off with that one because yes, it does. But you see the problem here, right? The argument creates itself. If you hold the belief that everyone starts at zero, and this is your one truth that you're willing to believe over everything and everyone else, this is the pillar of your ideology, and you rationalize your entire worldview around it, then you have to believe that women are worse than men, because it is the only way to explain the statistics. And you can rationalize that in as many ways as you want, and it boils down to the same truth, right? Oh, well, it's not that women are worse, it's just that they're not as good at business. Or, it's not that women are worse, it's just that they're not as hardworking. Like, no. <laughs> it comes down to the same fundamental belief. You have to believe that women are worse than men if you believe that everyone starts at zero. This worldview is fundamentally sexist. It's fundamentally racist and transphobic and bigoted across the board. And if you believe this fundamental truth that women must be worse than men, then you're a part of the reason why women perform worse in terms of finances and recognition in this industry, in every industry, because you're bringing those beliefs into the workplace, into the classroom, the studio, the photo pit, the client brief, and in doing so, reinforcing that belief when you see it reflected in the professional outcomes of the women whose careers you're impacting. I am so angry to see the men who paint these assumptions onto me, that I'm not working hard enough, that I don't want success badly enough, that I would be happier settling down and starting a family. You don't know me. You don't know how hard women work in this industry to be taken seriously. Making fun of us for plastering ourselves on social media as though it isn't the only avenue to success that a lot of us have. Telling us to raise our rates or work on our portfolios or just do our best. As if we haven't tried that already. As if we need a man to come in and tell us how to do our jobs because we just can't figure it out. That's another one, actually. Oh, you set your own prices, so you're responsible for your own earnings. So if I set my rate at $2,000 an hour, that's what I'll make. No, people pay us what they think we're worth, and they think women are worth less. I'm tired, man, and this week I am really, really tired. A part of me takes all of this to heart. I take it on, and I put it right here, like right next to my identity. You don't think I work hard enough? I'll work even harder then. I'll take on more and more and more and I'll branch out. New projects, new genres, blog posts, reels, emails, prints, podcasts, upload, 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 content, content, content. Am I working hard enough yet? A friend of mine told me recently that he has a buddy who's a photographer who makes $10,000 a month and lives in my city too. And when I told this friend that I had just had a particularly flush month at $3,500, he said, well, damn, you gotta step it up. At what point have I reached that top step? Here's one of the most annoying comments in the whole thread. Even your work is fabulous and you seem to be doing pretty well. What? Pro photo not sponsoring you? Is that it? If you ever struggle as a photographer, you totally forgot what it was like. It boils down to, why are you talking about this when you look successful? And I'll tell you, if I didn't look successful, it would be, you're just talking about this because you feel entitled to success. Listen. I'm not successful. I am struggling. I am working 14 hour days right now trying to make this thing work. And I'm pulling income from like six different sources because photography alone 
doesn't cut it. And I am probably earning in the top 30% of female fashion photographers, at least in Canada. I am just skimming above the line of not making it, and I am always skimming that line. The women who stay above that line as professional photographers are confined to a handful of women-friendly genres. Weddings, newborns, maternity, couples. And even then, these women struggle to stay on top struggle to get the recognition that they deserve, the sponsorships, the magazine features, the non-financial rewards for their artwork and labor. Well, you're not entitled to success. Man, at some point, yes, we are, right? Women are entitled to success if we put all of the same work in to earn it as our male counterparts. Which, boy oh boy, do we ever. Okay, so here's the end of the video. <laughs> where I said I would save some breath to rebuke some individual comments, mostly for my own personal satisfaction. <laughs> Tried to get my girlfriend into photography, turns out she doesn't want to run a business. So let's stop talking about this. <laughs> okay, good for your girlfriend, right? She is not a case study of all women. <laughs> and frankly, this anecdotal bullshit is cluttering the comment section. I know a person, therefore all people are like them. <laughs> it's not an argument. You're ignoring the statistics and you're making no sense. <laughs> Here's another one. Before you make a video, make sure you have facts, not opinions. For the US, 61.7% of all photographers are women, while 38.3% are men. Bro, I said, women make up less than 25% of all professional photographers making a full-time income. I did not say women make up less than 25% of all photographers. So while it's true that the number of photographers overall skews female, the number of photographers making a full-time income from their work skews heavily male. This is a fact that I point out later in that very same reel, which by the way, is only a minute long. So it doesn't need a huge attention span to actually listen. I was very specific in my wording in order to get the facts across properly, but he just closes his little ear holes and goes la 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 patriarchy. Last one. You can't just expect women to graduate and make up 50% across all age groups. Okay, but, but why not, right? <laughs> like, if 80% of people graduating from photography programs are women, why should we not expect to see at least a 50-50 split in the demographics of the people making a living at it? He goes on, do your best, keep doing it, and eventually we'll have an equivalent ratio that's also natural. Forcing equality has not been good, and it will only become worse. So how do you figure that equivalent ratio will come about? If we just ignore the problem, pretend it doesn't exist, tell women to stop mentioning it, eventually it will sort itself out. Why would that happen? Can you name a single social problem in history that has just sorted itself out? I can't think of a single one. In fact, I think a lot of the social problems that we've dealt with throughout history are ones we're still dealing with today. It does not sort itself out. My least favorite comments are the ones that ask me for a solution. So what's your solution then? Dude, if I had a solution, I would be solving sexism in this one minute Instagram video. Like, you think that I need to solve sexism before I'm allowed to talk about it. Come on! I think talking about it is the first part of the solution for sure. Making people aware of the statistics, talking about what sexism looks like how it impacts us, and that's why I'm here doing this. And I think also that allowing women to speak about it is another part of the solution. So let's just start with those things, okay? And we can, we can work on solving sexism from there. <laughs> One more thing before I go, and uh, I'm, I'm calling out my audience members directly here, <laughs> and I'm sorry, this is some tough love. There are only three comments on this entire reel that are from men who are not arguing the point. So. If you're a man watching this, and statistically, you are, there's some room for improvement here. Don't let these misogynists be the loudest male voices that we hear online. Take a minute to speak up. It sucks for me to say this, but your voice matters way more in this than mine does. Think about that, okay? Thank you to my audience for hearing me out today. I really appreciate your interest in this topic. I know this video was a little bit less formal and informative and a bit more of a rant than usual, but I needed to get it out of my system. I needed to put it out in the world and I appreciate you guys hearing me out on it. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. You can share this video too, that would be great. 
Um, if you want to support my channel and you want to support videos like this, video essays, gear reviews, etc., you can click the link in the description below to buy me a coffee. So thank you to anyone who considers that. I will hopefully see you guys next week with a new video. I'm getting my results back from a souped roll of Harmon Phoenix later today, so we'll see how that goes. And in the meantime, I want you all to stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. <laughs> Bye guys.